Hi everyone, <laughs> you, thanks for this introduction, I'm already weird <laughs> in your standards. Uh, the topic of to my uh, talk today will be web push notifications. So first I'll start to introduce myself in a normal way. <laughs> my name is Nadia Gnalska, uh, I'm a developer at uh, Visuality. We are a Warsaw-based uh, um, software house that specializes in uh, React and Ruby on Rails applications. And React is also uh, my weapon of choice, but this talk will be totally uh, library agnostic. So apart from uh, JavaScript, my hobbies include Internet of Things, historical costumes, and guinea pigs. So you've already seen what's the combination of the uh, first and the last one, but uh, what this means is that uh, half of my time I'm also spending <laughs> dressing up my little guineas as 19th century Prussian soldiers. And only the second half uh, I'm <laughs> trying to track their activities and quantify their lives. But the reason why they let me talk to you <laughs> here today was uh, to speak about uh, web push notifications. Those are those little alert bubbles that uh, come up on your phone and lately started appearing also on the web. Uh, how many of you ha here have uh, tried implementing web push notifications? Oh, good. Uh, so, the plan today is that first I will uh, talk a bit about the history of progressive web apps and give some context about uh, why web push came into being. Uh, next, we'll take a look under the hood uh, to see how a push API and notification API work. Uh, and at the end, I would like for us to have a serious talk about the responsibilities that come with using this great tool. Uh, so, uh, have you noticed how childishly competitive JavaScript developers can sometimes get? <laughs> it first started uh, way back with uh, Flash having browser games. Of course, JavaScript developers had to get in on this, and uh, now Flash is no more. Coincidence? <laughs> Uh, back, uh, real backend languages had all their fancy architecture and MVC frameworks, uh, which is when uh, solutions like Backbone, Ember, React, and Angular started appearing, kind of elevating the JavaScript development process to a real programming. Uh, Node.js is kind of a continuation of this trend. It's almost as if somebody said uh, to us that, ah, JavaScript can never uh, implement, uh, be implemented in backend, and we were like, hold our beer. <laughs> so nowadays, uh, it's the competition between uh, the, web, the mobile web applications and the native mobile application where things that get particularly vicious. It's almost as if the fact that to write a native application, you still need to use some other languages than JavaScript is a great affront to the great JavaScriptian culture. Uh, and who knows, maybe it is, because really, why do we need uh, apps to be native anyway? Uh, the common web app is instantly accessible by anyone with a browser. It omits all the fuss with going to the web store, it's just there. It can look great on any device. And uh, what's best, you need to only write the code once, have one code base uh, to be accessible through all the platforms. So it looks like, yay, we won. Well, not quite. There are still uh, some uh, strongholds where native applications remained unconquered. And those were the, the native-specific features, like the feeling of having your favorite application installable and accessible through one tap of your finger. Uh, the direct interaction with it without the browser always uh, being there like a third wheel. Mm. The absolute comfort of having at least most of, your, uh, most of your application available offline. And also the real-time notifications which uh, re-engaged you in a meaningful and convenient way. And this is exactly why this whole progressive web app thing was born. Uh, progressive web apps uh, is a parcel term uh, for just uh, your ordinary web apps which implement some features that m try to mimic the native experience. So in the long term, the plan is to make them indistinguishable from the real thing. We're not yet there. Uh, so when uh, the native uh, applications, uh, instead of uh, installation through the App Store, we can add a progressive web app uh, to our home screen and open it uh, with one tap. Um, the browser is being hidden in a Chromeless window. 
We also get a splash screen, so it's kind of obscuring the fact that the browser is indeed still there. Uh, offline access uh, is improved through advanced cache strategies. Uh, and instead of push notifications, we get web push notifications. Uh, so exactly what are those push notifications? Um, they are a direct uh, communication channel that uh, allows us to, um, to communicate with the user outside of the uh, UI of our, um, of our main application. Uh, they appear in real time. Uh, due to their format, they tend to be short and to the point. Uh, no personal data is needed to gather them or even deliver them, so that's good for uh, any GDPR concerns. And uh, uh, signing up for them is as easy as clicking, I agree. You don't have to give your email, you don't have to give anything. Uh, some good use cases of where it can be uh, implemented are um, all sorts of uh, appointment uh, uh, application, travel application that has some reminders, also reminders about uh, completing a task uh, um, for uh, e-commerce applications and uh, notifications that uh, there is some action, uh, there, is some, uh, there is some event that uh, needs uh, your action. Uh, there used to be a native-only feature up until 2015 when Chrome started implementing Web Push API in the browser, uh, allowing not only to receive Android notifications from uh, inside the web application, but they also gained access to uh, desktop uh, notification centers, allowing for a coherent experience across both platforms. Uh, Firefox soon followed and Edge and Opera joined in. Um, but uh, things started being a bit difficult with Safari. Uh, Apple didn't like the Bolshevik nature of a progressive web app, like giving the power, uh, taking the power from the App Store and giving it uh, to the developers. Uh, they still need to control it, so uh, even though they promised that yes, they will support progressive web apps in uh, Safari 11, uh, Safari 11.1, once it came out, it appears it uh, turned out that yes, progressive web apps are supported inside there, but not push API. So for now, you, the whole web push notification system doesn't work on Apple. But so let's not be discouraged and see how it works. So let's say we have a simple scenario. We have a server and uh, a web app running inside a browser. For now, it doesn't matter if it's uh, desktop or mobile. Uh, for the message to appear uh, directly inside the application, uh, we first need to have some system to send it uh, without the use of polling for every second. Uh, to do that, we first have to introduce uh, two, uh, two new actors. Uh, first is the service worker and the push service. Uh, the service worker is a little piece of code that's running, uh, that's being permanently installed on the user's machine. Uh, it runs in the background inside the browser, but outside of your application, kind of acting like your inside man on the user's browser, uh, diplomatic attaché. Uh, because of this, its life cycle is completely separate from your main applications. It's uh, mostly it's idle, but it can be woken up when needed. Uh, then there are the push services. Those are the systems that, uh, that are responsible for routing push messages. So uh, they are implemented by the various browser vendors. Uh, so for web push, uh, we're dealing mostly with uh, a Firebase for um, Chrome and Opera notifications and uh, auto push for Firefox. Uh, Apple did implement a notification system of their own, but it's kind of doing its own way, uh, doing its own thing and going its own way. Uh, so I won't cover it. And there does exist a Windows notification service, but everybody seems to forget about it. <laughs> so <laughs> for the... Um, Coming back to our scenario, uh, instead of sending the message directly to our application, instead uh, we send it to the push service, which then passes it on, it knows to which device, uh, and the service worker sits there inside the browser, but outside of your application, 
uh, and uh, listening to any incoming push messages. And when it, once it's get a message, it can choose to pass it on to our uh, main application, and we ha can have a notification uh, displaying somewhere inside the application. Yay! Uh, so by now you might be wondering uh, why I go through all of this. Uh, like installing permanently some shady service workers, using third-party push services when the same bilateral communication could have been achieved using good old WebSockets. Uh, is it another scam of, uh, to get more of your communication passing through Google's cloud platform? Who knows, maybe it is, but it does have its perks. Uh, where in uh, WebSockets, uh, the connection was being held open uh, between, uh, the, between your server and the client directly. Uh, with uh, service workers, the connection is being held open uh, between the push service and the service worker, or more specifically, between the service worker, uh, between the push service and the operating system of your device. So the whole burden of keeping it open is completely happening outside of your app application. You don't have to worry about it, and this doesn't slow it down. What's more, it's uh, configured so that it's good for battery use and uh, other things that the operating systems worry about. Um, uh, what's also uh, great about it is that uh, the service worker, once registered, is being treated as a more trusted entity uh, than uh, the web app running somewhere inside the browser. Uh, so it gets a uh, gets so it gets access to a delightful set of additional APIs. Uh, we've seen web push API in, in work and channel messaging for communicating between the service worker and, uh, and our application. There's also fetch API, background sync API, cache API, um, and the list always grows. Uh, but for now, for us, uh, the we need to uh, focus on the second part of a web push notification system, the notifications API. Uh, this is the API that's uh, directly responsible for showing the alert bubbles. Uh, they will look different on uh, different operating systems. Uh, this one here is uh, Android, and this is Mac who, from Chrome. Uh, each notifications can uh, uh, has its own title, its body, and they also can have some rich context like icons, uh, custom-made vibration music, and uh, even some dialogue elements. So implementing it in our system, uh, instead of sending the message uh, fr from the service worker directly to our app, we instead can use uh, notification API uh, and use the system notifications for the alert to appear outside of our application. What's great about it is that even when our app won't be, uh, when, the quick, when the user won't be currently using our app, the notification will still be visible for him, impossible to not to notice. So it's uh, like the best tool for re-engaging your user to come back to your app. What's more, because uh, the um, notification because the push services are the same thing that uh, the native applications use to pass on their uh, uh, messages, uh, even when the user, uh, even when the browser is closed, uh, the notifications will still arrive and will still be handled by uh, the operating system. Uh, so, how to get this wonderful system running? Uh, first, we need to register the service worker. This is uh, quite easy. Uh, it, all it does is, is points uh, the browser to where the file is, where the service worker is implemented. Next, we use the service worker to subscribe to the push service. Uh, this is a bit longer, but what's uh, basically happening here is uh, first we're asking uh, the user to grant us permission to show him the notifications. This is mandatory and he will see an alert bubble like this, uh, so to uh, asking him for permission. And if he grants us for per the permission, we can use the service worker's built-in push manager <laughs> to, uh, uh, to register to the push service using your application server key. Uh, as a result of this, we'll, we'll uh, 
we get a subscription object uh, which will uh, include a REST endpoint, uh, which is uh, showing us which uh, push notification service we will use and uh, identifies the device to which it uh, should be sent. It also includes some um, uh, encryptment keys. Uh, next, we use this subscription object. Uh, the, we send it back to our own web server uh, to be stored, segmented, and uh, the, we have to decide where, when to send the notifications. Uh, this is largely um, dependent on the language we're using at the backend, so I won't be covering this. Of course, we can use, we do it in Node. Uh, but sending the message itself is quite easy because it's, it's uh, basically doing a REST call, a post, a post message to uh, this endpoint that we got using some uh, uh, encryption keys in the headers. Uh, as for what the service worker does, uh, for the length of time I have been speaking about it, this is the full content of it. Uh, it basically listens to uh, incoming push messages, and when it receives one, it uses the notification API to display, uh, to decode the message that uh, uh, it has received and uh, show it in our system. And yay, we have a message. So. By now we know how it works, so it's time to get uh, serious about, um, about how we do it. I've started to working with, uh, when I started working with push notifica notification, I was so excited about having this new, uh, fresh new channel to get to our user that, uh, that was not yet uh, so spammed as email, not yet universally detested like pop-ups. Uh, so um, it was as if we, get, if, we get, if we were getting the second chance to get our information to the user and do it right this time. Fast forward to today. I don't know if you have seen the web lately. How many of, uh, times have you seen something like this? You go to a web page and it's, uh, first it's the GDPR notice, then it's uh, the ad block notice, and on top of it all it asks me for, uh, to show per <coughs> It asks me for the permission to show notifications. I don't know why, because I haven't seen the web page. I'm definitely not ready to make such a commitment yet. Uh, and uh, the prevalence of such a scenario has caused uh, people to associate push notifications with something annoying like those pesky fruit flies. What's more, uh, the more resolute of those annoyed users uh, have found out the way that you can uh, permanently disable any website from asking uh, for permission to show notifications ever again. Which is quite scary because uh, just because somebody didn't know how to behave, we all here could lose uh, the opportunity to get our information to the user. <laughs> Because the push notifications and progressive web apps became such a buzz, buzzword um, uh, about last year or something like this, everybody wanted to have them uh, regardless of or not if it was relevant to their business needs or more importantly to the business needs of uh, their users. And because of this, uh, our notification centers uh, uh, are getting spammed with uh, low quality notifications like uh, news that are being broadcast uh, to everyone regardless if it's relevant to them or not, uh, mistargeted uh, ads, uh, mistargeted offers and some notifications which are quite creepy and come off as really desperate cries for attention. Uh, so if I could have, um, like, if I could ask you for a favor, please don't. <laughs> Please use them responsibly. Uh, they are a wonderful tool and let's not like, destroy this opportunity by being too eager and spamming too much. Uh, think about your user. Make the, application, make the notifications relevant. Uh, if the users, make them personalized and uh, timely because if the user's, user isn't available to answer those two questions, why am I getting this notification, and when am I getting this notification now, then probably you're annoying him. Also, um, we can learn a great deal from, uh, the, um, from the native mobile world, where the push notifications have been for a longer time, and they've developed a lot of patterns for uh, 
for asking politely for permissions. Um, you can either delay the asking uh, of the notification for at least until the user has been on your website for five minutes or 30 seconds or if he visited five pages. There is also a good uh, UX pattern to use custom permission prompts, which gives you a place to give context to the user why the notifications will be given. If you show, uh, if the user knows that, yeah, it's a weather app, it will probably want to show me notification, then he will, he will know why the bubble uh, is uh, asking him for something. What's best about the solution is that, uh, the, not, uh, that the user will, uh, We'll also see uh, this, uh, that, that we implemented the notifications, even if he was one of those annoyed users who have blocked uh, all applications from asking ever again. And if we explain good enough wh why we are doing this and what he will, how he will profit from uh, allowing us pu our push notifications, who know? Maybe we will convince him and he will change his mind. So, summing it up, uh, the push notifications are a, can be a tool for good. They're being misused, but it uh, doesn't uh, spoil the, the fact that uh, they are a really, um, really powerful tool to keep your users engaged in your, in your applications. Uh, even if Apple is being a bit obstinate, uh, the, the notifications will still uh, reach uh, three quarters of uh, web users, so it's, it's, they are ready to use in production and you can start uh, using them. But uh, keep the user in mind and uh, keep them personalized, timely, releva relevant, uh, ask politely, and that's it. Thanks. <laughs> I'm back. Maybe someone would like to ask some questions to Nadia. Uh, can I update the notification or cancel it or maybe aggregate them? Because sometimes aggregating the is possible. Updating not also because if it uh, was being sent, it's the same as email. Uh, but cancel? if you use the tags, then if an application sends you five notifications uh, until you and you haven't trained one of them, they will be aggregated. Okay, thanks.